Happy Friday. It is Friday, and I'm not going to fight it. I am going to lean into the weekend like a big overstuffed uh, beanbag and enjoy it. And I am going to kick around funny headlines with two of my funny friends, both returning, both favorites of mine and the show. Jeremy Carrigan, welcome back. Good to be here, as always. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeremy Carrigan, very funny man, a playwright, uh, a uh, a former speechwriter for Gary Johnson, and uh, a man about town 2006 person of the year. Uh, lots of accolades for you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, se- second place pork pie throwing uh, in uh, in the county of Monroe in 1983. Yeah. Uh, those were those were the golden years too of pork pie. Golden throwing. years of yeah. pork pie throwing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the hat, not not the actual pie. You'd have to go to Britain for the that'd pie be throwing. that'd be crazy. Who would do that? That'd be nuts. <laughs> the, the the cleanup alone. Uh, <laughs> and we're joined by Andrew Young. Welcome back, Andrew Young. Thank you. My resume is exactly the same as Jeremy's without any pork pie accolades. Uh, yes, it's, it's exa- you are also a speechwriter slash accomplished playwright. Uh, mm-hmm. You you are, I should know this, you are also 2006 Times Person of the Year. That is legitimate. You did get that that's in 2006. Right. That's, that's you. True. That's, true. That's, <laughs> that's true. Goes, you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The Because it was, did you, did, you, did you guys ever do that? You, you guys probably don't have to fill out resumes at this point in your careers, but I for years would always put that at the bottom of my resume of 2006 Times Person of the Year just to see <laughs> if i would uh, to see if it would spark conversation that's right did it <laughs> yeah it, but really if it was if it was they would pull out the time magazine and it would say him yeah. and it would be a picture of andrew heaton on the cover right it well I, him. What, what i found was either a they wouldn't read the resume at all or b they would read it and instantly know what i was doing and think it was funny or c they would think i was an actual liar and not invite me in or, or, or be done. But I was like, but it, that was kind of good to know too. Cause I tend to do a lot of office pranks. So like if, if, if that, if me being honest, but funny involving t- 2006 if times first of the year, cheeky doesn't play right. Exactly. The full heat. And ain't yeah, going like, anywhere. and I, like I've worn costumes and things like uh, when I was at uh, reason here a couple of years ago, reason had a, a rat. Uh, uh, should I say this? They had a rat problem. And so one time, like I filmed a whole video of a guy looking in the office for a rat. And then it finally settled on me. And I was just wearing a full rat costume and started knocking books off shelves. Like that's oh, like, that's, uh, I was confused. I, I thought you meant that Reason had an informant in their ranks. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. They, they've got a they've they've got somebody that's like secretly working at Axios, who's yeah. like 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 listing it on the editorial meetings, and then going, "Oh, they're against occupational licensing. Let them know." Okay, good. Yeah, good to know. Yeah. All it right. Seems well, like a waste of time. Like if you're if you have an editorial based newspaper or magazine. They'll tell you what their opinion is. You don't need a rat. That's true. You're right. It's only if they're doing like really high octane espionage, but that doesn't tend to be the the political media slash think tank world of our era anyway, sadly. I do like the idea of media espionage. I mean, there was an entire James Bond movie based on that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there yeah, was, right, exactly. We we I actually did a bonus episode with with Justin Robert Young, who I assume is no relation to you, Andrew. Uh, here here a couple of weeks ago, where the um, he is my brother. That's oh wow. <laughs> The worlds collide. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but the, there was a thing, a big flap with Eric Swalwell from uh, California because there had been a, a Chinese honeypot, that is to say a Chinese spy uh, who was seducing. Uh, we, we don't know about Swalwell, but she seduced a couple of mayors and she was getting inside information and giving it to Beijing and all this stuff. And people were freaking out about it. And I was like, thank you. Like, we know they're going to be spies anyway. They might as well be, you know, seducing people. That's like, that's a gentlemanly way to conduct espionage warfare is at least get some sex out of it. That, that says China respects us as equals. I, I took that as well, a very nice gesture. It, it's better than poisoning you with polonium. Let's put it right. That way. Yes. Thank you. See when, when Russia kills a guy by injecting his foot with a plutonium pellet through an umbrella and he just like dies from radiation poisoning in a hospital, not gentlemanly conversely, like we send over some hot people to extract information. Like what, what better way to do espionage is there than that? that that's I, wet work. That's really <laughs> wet work. Wet work for the wet wick. Excellent. So we, we've done just what I wanted, which was to kick off the episode with both a pun and to really worry parents listening uh, who have their kids in the car. Uh, so excellent. We've done that. Let's then, How uh, you ended up alone in a camper, I'll <laughs> never know. <laughs> Yeah, who? I don't get it. What? What? A woman? Hey, lying ladies, on your resume, practical yeah. jokes at work. <laughs> ladies, you end up single alone this, in a camper. Without this a could all be I yours, ladies. You could, you could, you could be sharing this with me. This is available I, to you. I think your solution is just to find one of these honeypots, 
and let them seduce you and then give them information. And then you're all set in all fronts. I, yeah, no, I, I should have done that when I was in D.C. because I was drinking a lot in embassy events back when I lived in D.C. And like I told this is what should have happened is I should have been hired by the CIA or the NSA to just do disinformation because like I, I got told by several people that are in the intelligence community, I would make a terrible spy because right. I, 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 my, I, I, I comport myself like a, a professor in a Broadway musical. I am very, when I walk into the room, you're aware that I've walked into the room, right? And that's not good for spies. For spies, but you want like- that could be like, a double bluff. There's no way mm. he could be a spy. He'd be a terror. He could be a perfect spy. Right, and that was, that. see, that's my thought, is do capitalize on that, and then just be like, Heaton, here's your job today. Uh, you need to drink a fifth of vodka, and then just say that we're definitely pulling out of Pakistan, but like confide it into them, right? <laughs> they, they would just let give me, me tell you, also give me the Rams by four. <laughs> And uh, but I think it'd be great of that. I just, just I, I would just give bullshit information to throw off the Russians and the Chinese while schmoozing people and or having sex with their honeypots. I think I would be great at that. So instead, you just started a radio show. So instead, I started a radio show. I'm You're giving away that, disinformation for free. I, I'm <laughs> hoping that, that I'm hoping that the Biden administration listens and watches to this, but spies from other countries do not. And that they will they will take this and go, OK, yeah. So anyway, let me <laughs> let me kick it to our first headline for the day. Our first headline is from Africa. And this is I'll, I'll note this. This is uh, brought to us from Brendan. Uh, there's uh, the, the political orphanage and alienating the audience. My my gigantic podcasting empire has a discord channel that you, you can go to. And people on the discord are now suggesting headlines, which is great because it means I don't have to work as hard. Thank you very much, Brendan. Brendan sent this story to me. Adolf Hitler wins election in Namibia. Politician named after Nazi leader sweeps to victory, but promises he's not striving for world domination. Uh, so I started reading this and I thought, surely this is some kind of weird media sensation story where a guy changed his name to Hitler to like raise awareness about parking spaces or he's like a neo-Nazi. And it turns out, no, he's uh, what appears to be a fairly nice black guy named Adolf Hitler Uanano. And uh, uh, Adolf Hitler Uanana, or excuse me, Uanana, uh, was elected by 85% of his vote in uh, in the city council of of his city in Namibia, which is a, a German former German colony. And that's right. He was already winning, and he he'd been listing himself on the ballot as Adolf H Uanana. And it, the, the media got a hold of it. it. Was like actually his full name is Adolf Hitler Uanana. And I think very earnestly he's saying like, look. My dad grew up in this German colony. He, he'd heard of Hitler. He knew he was a big thing. He didn't know what Hitler was about. So he named me I, Adolf Hitler. How does that work? I mean, Agreed. I just go, yeah. yeah. Holes in that Hitler. story. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Agreed. Because like, how do you, you're like, uh, someone's like, hey, can I tell you about Hitler? And you're like, that's all I need to know. I just needed to know that it was a household name. I want no further information. And I refuse to hear any further information for the rest of my time. And then the, the other bit that I find slightly odd about, there, there's a bunch of things weird about this. Like, like the, the other thing is, wouldn't, you ch if, if like young, if you got your birth certificate and it turns out as a joke, your dad had named you Adolf Hitler young, wouldn't you change Hitler? Like you might keep Adolf, like you might become like Adolf Funtzmeister well, was, young or something. I, 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 you would, you would think so. If right. I, I mean, listen, if I was just going to live my life and exist, maybe not. If I was going to run for office, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, probably I would take the necessary efforts to go change my name. And if people dug it up, I'd be like, yeah, I changed it so, I could, so that I wouldn't be a problematic person running for office. Right. Well, yes. All that know, makes sense to me. Have you ever heard of William, William Stewart Houston? No. Well, he was his, his Wilhelm Hitler was his name. His Hitler's brother or cousin, I forget. He was an American and, you know, uh, not into the whole Nazi thing. Okay. But, uh, you know, he, he had to change his name. He was like, I, I don't want to be a Hitler anymore. Right. But the thing is, Hitler wasn't a Hitler. He was a Schickel Gruber. So. Wait, what? Wait, so he that was. That wasn't Hitler's name. That, that was, was like his, his maiden. It was his maiden name or like he, his, like he, he got into vaudeville and like. Yeah, his like mother's Schick name was, his mother's last name was Hitler. Uh, his name was Alois Schickelgruber, and he he changed. He thought Adolf Hitler sounded like a little more. A little Honestly, more it does. It. What was it? Adel, I, I Adel, Adel, Adelweiss Schickenlooper? What was it? Adelweiss. Alois Schickelgruber. I can't be what frightened of a man named Alois Schickelgruber. 
Al- Alois Schippelgruper sounds like a German who like drives around selling candy canes or something. Like it's, I, it's, it's a, exactly. it sounds very like Prussian, Victorian, and frilly. Whereas Adolf mm-hmm. Hitler, you're like, yeah, that guy might shoot me. Yeah. So, so I mean, good, good branding call on his part. So yeah. So there was a there there's a whole branch of American Hitlers for a while, but they all changed their name, and uh, wisely. Yep. Uh, here's so, here's here's my other issue with. The, at least his father's, uh, how, what his father claims to be the case. Namib- Namibia was a German colony, but not during the First or Second World War. It had been, it had been taken over yeah. by South Africa. So it's not like they had random streets that were like, oh, during, during World War II, we decided to name the street after Hitler because at the time leading up to World War II, he was a, he was a leader that seemed to be yeah, turning H- Germany H- around. Hitler Strasse so, at the time made sense. You're right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's well, not like he, it's not like he saw a street sign that said Adolf Hitler and thought, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's even, it's also weird because in the United States, in Long Island, in the town of Yafank, uh, or, uh, is, was a Bundes colony, camp colony, and there was Hitler Boulevard, there was uh, there was Himmler Boulevard, Himmlerstrasse, and you know all of these town, all of these streets in Long Island, you know, it was it was illegal to to sell to Jews and to black people, Whoa. interestingly. So Adolf Hitler, uh, you know, you ooh Anana. I, I try, I'm remembering it because yeah. it's like, oh, there's a grandmother, an Italian. Ooh, Anana. There you go. Well, is it, well, this brings up another point. The guy is black. So, 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 so N- Namibia is a German, former German colony, right? And there is a small and apparently very vocal German population that lives there. Like they've, like there have been some incidents in the past where there are some like rather the kicking rich ones. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. 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 And, and, and <coughs> while I don't know nearly enough about Namibia to, to make broad strokes, there have been some neo-Nazi groups that have like, in, in like like tried to like like relocate the body of like uh, Alger Hess down there or so like 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 yeah, weird yeah. stuff like right. But this isn't one of those guys. This is a black guy. Like this is an African man. And I and I like I feel like it would be it would be odd as an African to name my child knowingly after a white supremacist who thinks that we are a sub race, right? Like, like well, it, he, it wouldn't he make a says sense. He didn't know Heaton. He says he didn't know. He says that he, he walked down the street, saw a book with Hitler's name on it and thought, yep, that's the thing. <laughs> Instead of well, Bismarck or Nietzsche or whoever else he could have chosen. <laughs> <laughs> Nietzsche, Strasse. Like they, they fall, they seem to fall in and out of, uh, ideologies pretty regularly in Namibia. Swap, Swapo used to be a Marxist-Leninist terrorist organization, and as soon as the Soviet Union fell and the money stopped coming, they're like, "All right, we're done with that." Now we're sort of social democrat, middle of the road. So, okay, so, so they're just they're, they're really bandwagoners. They just get really enthusiastic about the thing of the day, and then they're through and they move on. Okay, yeah. Or, or I'm thinking maybe alternately, maybe like I don't know. The, the wife's going into labor and she's like, sweetie, I'm going into labor. You've got to pick a baby name before I deliver this baby. Like that's, we, we've, we've, we've got these gender Any roles here. We'll do. Yeah. Anyone. You've got, and then he goes to the racetracks and he's like gambling and stuff. And he's like, Oh no, I got to do this. And he like runs back and there's a time magazine out on the desk. And he's like, uh, Adolf Hitler. And like, just like, like, it, like that's like, that's, so <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just a complete total negligence. Either way. I fully endorse this man and hope that he becomes president <laughs> of Namibia. He seems like a good sort. Uh, I, he, he's, he's publicly said he does not intend to take over the world and does not believe in Nazism. That's all I need. And I That's wish him the best. more than can be said about our president. So. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I, I have to say, here's the, th- here's the thing about this. Uh, remember all the all the hoopla and bullshit uh, when people were like, oh, Barack Obama's middle saying his name is Hussein. Right. Yeah. Like, this is so much worse. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, everybody in Jordan. Not Hitler. Like, like, yeah, young, you and I went to Jordan together for very legal yeah, reasons. Hussein's a con- I mean, yeah. the king of Jordan's last name Everybody's is Hussein. Hussein over there. At least everybody we met is Hussein. And, like, yeah, then there's also Saddam. It's a very common, like, it's like it's Arab, but there's, like, a, there's more specificity to it. Well, I don't remember was, what it is. Was a was a prophet. It was. Uh, right. Was yeah, prophet, yeah. Right? It's common. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Hitler, though. Hitler's because like like if you say Hitler, no one ever goes like, well, do you mean Adolf Hitler or uh, or or Merrill Hitler, or Ted Hitler, who as we all know is a diabetes researcher? Yeah, is it Ted Hitler or Adolf Hitler? Like it's like it, there's only one. So yeah, uh, all right, I'm gonna kick it a bit further north. To- oh, here, but here's something before you move on. By the way, I, there's something interesting here that the name 
you know, do you know uh, about the area called the Skeleton Coast in Namibia? No, but it sounds like a delightful place to go on tour. It sounds like yeah, a wonderful. Fun. Yeah, Sun Skeleton fog, Coast, go on. It, it's, an, it's one of the worst places you could possibly do shipping. And there's all these rotting husks of, you know, of, of, of shipwrecks. Uh, along the coast. It's called the Skeleton Coast. And the Bushmen of the Namibian interior called it the land God made in anger. And Portuguese <laughs> sailors called it the gates of hell. So great. Oh, I love sailors. <laughs> if, if you're worried about, you know, the next apocalypse, Adolf Hitler getting elected from the land God made in anger and the gates of hell, you might get a little worried. Just an idea, you know? Yeah. Every, but just to be safe, everybody go home and read Revelations tonight. Just in case, in case there's anything popping up we need to know about. There, there, could, be, there could be one byproduct of this whole thing. He might uh, be able to save the name Adolf Hitler and turn it around. <laughs> what if he's a really great if politician? That guy, like, if you that know? guy cures cancer, if that guy cures cancer, it's going to be a, which what, what, how, Adolf Hitler, Uanano, or Adolf Hitler, the genocidal maniac. And it's like the uh, Uanano, clearly the one who cured cancer with that. Yeah, the good he, one. He invented that amazing orgasm that just blows cancer out of your body. That guy, <laughs> like that's the one I'm talking about. It's like, oh, yeah, that's great. I just had an Uanano. <laughs> <laughs> Go with his last name. It's better. It's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, all the best to uh, Mr. Uanano. Uh, up in Scotland, Scotsman jailed for trying to cross Irish Sea on a jet ski to visit his girlfriend defying the Isle of Man's coronavirus restrictions. A 28 year old traveled from Scotland to the Island of uh, the Isle of Man. Days after he arrived, he was sentenced to jail for four weeks. He purchased the watercraft set off at 8 a.m. for what he thought would be a 40 minute trip from Southwest Scotland to his girlfriend's home on the Isle of Man. Uh, however, uh, he had never ridden a jet ski before and the bad weather in the Irish sea caused that 40 minute trip to stretch into four and a half hours. He was able to get there, walk 15 miles from the North coast to the capital, meet up with his girlfriend for a few days and then got arrested. Wow. Uh, all sorts of ballsy here, all sorts of ballsy of, I have never ridden a jet ski before. I'm going to do it for the first time crossing the Irish sea. Uh, good call. Uh, okay. Wait. So, Jeremy, you taught us about Aloise Shickle Grouper. Aloise Shickle Grouper. Uh, I, I want to, uh, Uncle Heaton's going to teach the audience a new term as well. This is an actual term. It's called a Miller Helen. Uh, oh, young, you, the, young, I you and I, term. You, you and I went to the same school. You have a guess as to what a Miller Helen is? Well, no. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. I, I know this one. So, so. I mean, I mean, I mean the you could etymologize Mila to being a thousand, right. but it yes, is the perfect. Okay. Of, it is the amount of beauty required to uh -huh. launch precisely one ship. Right. Exactly. Because Helen in in the Iliad is the of, face that the launched face a thousand launched, ships. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, so one Helen unit is a thousand ships worth of hotness. Right. A Mila Helen is if you're hot enough to get a ship. This lady is one Mila Helen hot. Because so far, she's had one jet ski come to find her. So uh, kudos to her for being a Mila Helen. Most people don't even get to that, if you think about it. Uh, and uh, Wait, like, Hayden, Hayden, you're not really calling a jet ski a ship, are you? <laughs> maybe. So would it be like, like would it be like uh, maybe like uh, 0.75 Mila Helens? What do we want to give that? 0.5? Well, no, these, are, these were Greek. You know, we're talking about launching Greek ships. They didn't have any kind of motorboat at all. So, mm. I mean, maybe Mila Helens, True. you got to. You got to give them a little bit. Yeah, I like plus young. Like, like think about like if, if Achilles had the option of being on a jet ski or being on a rowboat, he would pick the jet ski, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because I, right, I, I, right, I, right. I, I basically picture Achilles as Danny McBride, only with better abs. Yeah, he need he would need room for Patroclus though, because you got to have Patroclus on your mm -hmm. back. I mean, mm -hmm. literally and figuratively. Yep. This we're getting. Let's just drop all of this. Go into straight up idiot analysis, <laughs> uh, man. If you guys haven't read Dan Simmons, he's a great sci-fi author, and he did a whole thing about this uh, where the gods of Greece live on Mars. It's a really cool book story. Um, uh, hey, so okay, so kudos to this guy. Um, yeah, very kudos. ballsy. Uh, very, very ballsy uh, that he did this. Um, I've I I I, I to, to I've never been to the Isle of Man. I did date a Manx. Uh, my my ex girlfriend is from the Isle of Man, and she described it as. 85,000 alcoholics clinging to a rock. That was her, her explanation of the Isle of Man. And if, you're, if anybody listening at home is unfamiliar with this, the Isle of Man is kind of like a colder version of Guam to the United Kingdom. Like it's not, it's not, they don't vote in British elections. They're not British, but they're like, like the, the Navy defends them and they use the queen on their stamps and stuff. So they're, they're kind of like the Commonwealth. Yeah. Uh, they are, they have universal suffrage uh, 
starting at the age of 16, which is interesting. You can start voting when you're 16. Yeah. Uh, which is probably why they're all alcoholics. Right. Uh, then, uh, and they were the first part of the UK ish that allowed gay marriage. So that was nice, huh. I guess. Nice. I didn't know that. Okay. I guess they were, yeah. So P props to the Isle of Man. Yeah. What do you, There's what do you, what do you call a ship launched for two guys? Hmm. I, I guess you'd call it a, a Costello unit. Would you like, what would you, uh, a, a, a Costabit? Would it be a Costabit? I'm trying like a, well, a, that's, Bar that's, a Barnum Bailey. I'm trying to think I, of. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, a, a, I feel a, like that's a, a partnership. A Siskabert. A Siskabert would be one, uh, one, one ship. Yeah. Do you, okay. What would you mean? Is it for two guys? Like you mean a, a homosexual so a, it, military? Yeah. yeah. If, two, if two gay men in a relationship and one person takes uh, a ship to get to the other person. What would that is since Amilla Helen is the heterosexual equivalent? What what would be the homosexual? Well, Patroclus equivalent? was was on the ship with him, so it it'd be a really wet Patroclus. Yeah, it'd yeah, be a, a, a or, 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 or a, a Patroclus scoop. Actually, you know what, Young? I don't know that it has to be gender, does it? Could couldn't couldn't a Helen just be? It could a, just a, be a beauty. Base? It could just yeah. be beauty. Yeah. So but so the thing like is, if, men were allowed on ships, so you didn't have to. You could take them with you. That that's why Greeks went with the with the boys you know that's why yeah they... wait hold on a second though since you couldn't put women on ships what was their plan when they got to troy and got her out <laughs> build a tunnel that's a good point <laughs> <laughs> a really big trebuchet like fling! yeah <laughs> were they were they just going to like drag her on a barrel behind the uh, like one of the homeric galleys <laughs> entirely possible i like i also think people give like we, we, we give classical antiquity a little too much credit when it comes to war. A lot of those guys were just excited to kill people. Like a lot of them, they were like, hey, we're going to war. And they're like, oh, yes, hot damn. Whore is in another country and I get to kill foreigners. Great. Like that. Like, like they that. didn't stop to ask what the reason. See, there's yeah, this yeah, yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> there's this girl. Okay, so is she hot? Yeah, enough said. Great. Let's get let, on a boat. Let's go. Let's We've got <laughs> 999 friends. We're going to go rescue her or kill her. I don't really care. I just want to murder people in Turkey. Right. <laughs> uh, he, okay, so I do have a, I have a question uh, more uh, germane to the story itself. Okay, yeah. Um, which is, okay, so the Isle of Man is what, like 50 miles off the coast of Scotland? I don't think it's even that much. I think it's like 26 miles. Can yeah. you see it l like Sarah Palin can see Russia from her house? You can. If you were, if you were standing more, in yeah. the, the very southwest corner of Scotland, you can see the Isle of Man from there. It's, uh, like, I, I've never done it, but it is visible in the three days a year when there's not fog uh obscuring the two okay so so he so he's saying that weather either knocked him off course such that he couldn't like swerve yes. a straight line or that fog made it so he got lost i you what i actually read the story and this is something that baffled both sides of that street like both the scottish authorities and the irish authorities were like oh i shouldn't have done that not okay during a pandemic you're not supposed to go over there you know they, they've been quite good at stopping it i don't know why it took him four hours he could have he could have just swam it if he felt like it. He could I don't know what he was doing to get lost. Yeah, I I, I very likely it was fog that, that did that because uh if, if not, if it's it was just four hours of him of time. struggling to get over there, that was probably terrifying. Like if you've ever been if you've ever been in a, a canoe or something where like you're fighting oh, yeah. against a gale, it is not fun. And like that might have been what he was doing. Um, which case it was probably uh you know very cathartic when he when he got to hang out with his girlfriend after all that. He's uh, Scottish uh, and, and going to the Isle of Man. There might have been some alcohol involved. <laughs> yes, I think that that is. There, I mean, probably can't you added, just say? Can you just say he's Scottish? There was probably some alcohol involved. <laughs> <laughs> right. I actually feel like that's that's a foregone conclusion. You have to specify that he was Scottish but sober. You're like, oh, go on. <laughs> this this story is intriguing so far. I, I have I have one more one more uh, question for clarity. How did he get caught? Um, I don't know, actually. Hold on a minute. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Let's see. Did he, um, did he, did he park his jet ski in a public park and said, jet ski used to cross to see my girlfriend? You, you know what I, what I bet it is? I don't know this for a fact, but, but it's not, it's only 85,000 people, right? And that's spread out ac across the island. Uh, fair bet. Most of them know each other pretty well. Uh, so if you're like, uh, you know, if no one knows you and you are walking around and you seem kind of exercised and really well sexually satisfied, uh, they're like, wait a minute, that dude's not from here. So uh, what you're saying is that what's the, the Isle of Man for 
<laughs> the Isle of Man has a rat problem too. <laughs> the Isle of Man has a rat problem. Probably it was probably like, hey, like Brittany, you look, you, you, you just, you seem calmer and less twitchy. Like, what's up? And she's like, well, my, my, my bow, uh, you know, got a jet ski and came across the 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 Irish Sea. They're like, oh, and then they reported it to the local archduke. Were prime number. I don't know what they have over there. I don't know what the Isle of Man has. I know that I know that in Game of Thrones, that's basically the Iron Isles. Uh, but that's all I know. So I guess Greyjoy. They call it the House of Keys. Is their their various, um, uh, you know, they're, they're very they're tri it's tricameral, which is also interesting. I that's didn't know that. Well, I just like man it. okay this i lots to learn I, I wish that i'd been more engaged as a boyfriend when i was dating my uh my my uh manx ex i could have they have a really cool did flag you, did too you know your first name in manx did she tell you your first name in manx i don't know uh, let me think because it's celtic right um so it is a, it's a yeah it's a gaelic yeah, yeah it's 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 one of the six celtic nations um i i, I don't know uh, i don't know what andrew is y young do you know no I'm in celtic no, that, that's a language I never bothered to learn what my name was. In. <laughs> yeah. All right. The last, I guess the last person who died, who was a native speaker was in like the teens or something. So that and Cornish are both dead. Wait, is, is, is Manx dead? Well, I mean, yeah, technically, because everybody speaks English in the Isle of Man. So, but don't, don't like, like, like I know in Ireland they've been really good at reviving Irish. Uh, Welsh never went away. Scotland has some Gaelic that they speak in the Hebrides, but it's really on like kind of life life uh, support. Like it's it's just kind of kept afloat by subsidies. I, I think the last native speaker died a long time ago. It's, it could be in the, at the beginning of the 20th century, but may may still be around. I don't know. I may be wrong. Man, when, when all this stuff clears up, I'm going to get a jet ski and I'm going to go straight to the Isle of Man and learn about all of these things and, and do an episode from there. Truly, I would love to go to I would love to visit anywhere. Uh, and so uh, on a we'll, jet ski on a, Absolutely on a jet ski. That sounds great to me. Did you all ever right. see the fast show? The what? No, it was a, the fast show. It was, it was sometimes called brilliant in the U.S. It was a, a, a sketch comedy show out of the U.K. And they did all their sketches were like, you know there were just runners and blackouts like 30, 30, 20 seconds. And they had this great Isle of man, uh, uh, you know, tourist commercial where everybody's freezing in this downpour and they're like, come to the Isle of man, please. And that was the whole, <laughs> that was the whole commercial. <laughs> yeah. That would probably, like, cause I think like they don't talk like, so Wales is like if you talk to English people, Wales is their like their West Virginia. Like it's very pretty, but they look down on everybody there, uh, and they like they don't want to hang out with the Welsh. They just want to go skiing in their place. And like the Isle of Man would be like, f like it would be like if Minnesota were a tiny, distant, frozen island. I think something like that. Like it's a flyover right. stuff from the British mindset um, with a cool flag. I don't know. Like the, the the way the English think of the Welsh. That's how the Welsh think about the Manx. <laughs> That's right. Got it. Okay. We've got the hierarchy. Excellent. Well, I will, I will kick it to uh, uh, the continent of Europe where, tired of mockery, the Austrian village of fucking is changing its name. By the way, we're going to, for any parents in the car, if you weren't already thrown off by uh, the the wetware um, espionage pod at the beginning of today's program. Uh, be aware that we cannot discuss the story without using the word fucking, which at the moment I am using as a proper noun. However, uh, it will sound auspiciously as if it is an actual adjective. Uh, and so we're going to have to do it. Um, residents and we're circling back to Austria, birthplace of Alois Schickelgruber. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. He's from Austria. Uh, and actually the, his hometown's not there anymore because he had it destroyed, right? Didn't he have like his, uh, his hometown like obliterated because he just didn't, he wanted anything from his either either he like hated the local high school or alternately he he wanted any mythology about him being something he directly controlled as opposed to something yeah. organic it's somebody feel, could it's got to be him. more control the narrative right yeah 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 i i'd just like to do that you know if i were dictator anyways i don't know like broadcast <laughs> that much. yeah yeah you know like eh, fuck it I, get, rid, they're, get they're, rid of any <laughs> embarrassing photos that yeah, exist he, of you here's the exactly. deal we're, we're burning this down unless every single person can find my high school yearbook and destroy it if you can't we're burning the whole thing to the ground the whole thing down yeah uh so uh, residents of the Austrian village of fucking are changing their name, their new name to fuging, F-U-G-G-I-N-G, after ridicule and repeated right. theft, Lame. fugging, uh, would it be yeah. fugging? Yeah, uh, fugging, um, yeah. fugging uh, after ridicule and theft have become too much to do. People keep swinging by fucking, which is the current name to steal, um, to steal signs and take photos. Uh, the, the, the authorities have had to like, 
at one point they installed a sign at two meters height, which is what, like 10 feet uh, or 14 feet. And they embedded it in theft resistant concrete because people They're kept stealing it. They're doing all wrong. They should have, an, they should have a, a vending machine of street signs right? there. You yes. put in a hundred bucks, get one out. No problem. Agreed. I agree. It's, See, this is why America's better than Austria. Because we would figure out, we not only would we do this, we'd probably be like, man, nobody's going to Burtville. I know. Why don't we rename it fucking Montana? And like, then we'll go ahead and <laughs> Welcome to fucking stuff. Montana. Yeah, welcome to fucking Montana. We'll sell gifts. Yeah, absolutely. We did. No, they they like apparently fought this uh, a huge amount. It's been a huge back and forth. Like, And it's created all these other weird ripple effects. Like I looked into this in 2010, a brewery in the Black forest managed to register a pale logger by the name of fucking hell because they convinced the european union's trademarks and designs registration office that this was very much a reference to the village of fucking and not an expletive which would have been prohibited by eu law <laughs> so, <laughs> some 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 guy had to go to brussels and convince the local bureaucrat of like no really this is no i'm from fucking and this uh this is celebrating uh that, that it is uh it's it is uh, a, a hot place in the summer and uh and, but no this this is fucking for sure. And uh, no, that's happened. So they can't do expletives from any country. Like, like, like what if lager was like, fuck you in Latvian? Like the mm. EU has made it very difficult to, yeah, why to, to did, name what, things. Well, and why did, here's a, here's, why did the Austrian village choose the teenage version of the word that they wanted to replace? <laughs> the, the, oh yeah the, why did why the, did they the, go the with branson homophobe? missouri appropriate word like like what we yeah. would do at a pg-13 tv show like instead, instead of fracking on bsg they went with fugging that is a yeah, very good point well actually like, norman, like told uh, the- norman mailer used used that spelling in the naked and the dead and supposedly you know there's this famous story about when he met dorothy parker she said oh so you're the young man who can't spell fuck uh and <laughs> Uh, it, that's apocryphal. I, I got to meet Norman uh, a couple of times before he died. He goes, I cool. met Dorothy Parker. So that was quite fun. But here's another thing: looking at the various. So uh, the part of that story mentions the the people that it might have been named after. Yeah, and yeah, other yeah, yeah. Various. Do, are are, are you referring to Adelpert von Wuckingham? No, excuse Vuckingham. me. Wuckingham. Adelpert von Wucking Wuckingham. Wuckingham. Yeah. Wuckingham. 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 Adelpert von Wuckingham. Yeah. Okay. Now I see why they didn't want to pick that name. That's hard to say. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that no, that makes that makes total sense. If they were going to call it Adelpert von Wuckingham, they could have called it Alpertsburg. They, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. honestly, the best Albert? version is the best version is where local lore suggests that a sixth-century Bar- Bar- uh, Bavarian aristocrat called Fa- Faco. Faco <laughs> is great. Faco is a great name. Faco. Faco. Maybe maybe they're just completely trolling us because this all makes this all sounds made up to me of like some like 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 the local high school team just went on on Wikipedia and we're like, yeah, yeah, we're named after Adelpert von Buckingham. Uh, but maybe Fucko, the delightful Bavarian <laughs> count. <laughs> I would love it if all of these people from fucking Austria are, are go all the time to Phuket thailand and take pictures of themselves in front of phuket oh sides. i so hope that you know how like like various cities have sister cities wouldn't oh, that be, be great? great that would be <laughs> wonderful and like and they just all they do is commiserate of like but it doesn't even mean it in time they're like yes it does not mean that in, in austrian we don't say heaton, that either heaton what was what? that town in america that we talked about in a previous story that changed its name from uh, something as, as but there's asbestos quebec that you and i talked about and there's yeah, also yeah, yeah. swastika new york which i believe is still debating that, okay. whether to so, change its name so that's the one that should be the sister town to fucking yeah. Austria. And furthermore, <laughs> the guy, the guy in Africa should just change his name to fucking Hitler. Fucking Hitler. <laughs> I'm fucking Hitler. Uh, Adolf fucking Hitler. Uh, 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 yeah, no, that's yeah. No, no. Ud- Udugata, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I, so I, I think they're going about this the wrong way. Like, or I, rather, I think, um, like if you want to troll them, because what used to happen is people would go in and steal the signs and like, you know, like take pictures of themselves in flagrante delecto on a park bench and like delightful things that drove all the locals crazy. Right. What I think that if you want to troll fucking Austria, we all need to return the signs we stole and keep replacing them. So that like, back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They wake up and they're like, what? No, we changed our name. We're fucking now. Why is it back to fucking? Because we're going to keep putting it back there. We, we're not letting you change your name. We love it too much. See, unlike Adolf Hitler or Anana, they can't claim that they didn't know what this meant because the word fucking is a Saxon word. It was German. They were fucking before fucking was fucking. So they can't they can't claim that we had no idea. They're like, we are fucking. 
And so, <laughs> Jeremy, I want you to be the lawyer that argues against the name change in court. <laughs> in <Australia. laughs> I'm just a poor country. <laughs> my my favorite line from this whole. <laughs> Just a poor country. I'm fornicator. just a poor alpine country. About. I don't know nothing except about walking in the hills with singing orphans. Uh, I, I don't know about uh, these fancy Saxon names. I just know that I was raised in fucking, and my daddy was too. And, I was born uh, by fucking. And I'll die was... fucking. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All great. My my favorite line from this story. There was just this little tag at the bottom that just says, "There's been no confirmation whether the neighboring hamlets of Oberfucking and Unterfucking will be affected by the name change." Which is even better if if uh, if, 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 fucking, if fucking stays if fucking changes it, but under fucking and over fucking these are even better. These are even better. The names to they should change those names to hard up and blind. <laughs> <laughs> which okay, here's a question of uh, Ober and Unter. Which is the most likely to not change its name as a troll move to the to the overall city? Uh, mm. I'm not sure. H- I think it's over fucking personally. Now, is Ober fucking like at a higher elevation or is it like East Aurora, New York, where it's actually west of Aurora? I think it's referring to sexual positions. <laughs> you think, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. You go to that Welcome time. Welcome to like, reverse cowgirl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're like, oh, yes, yeah. Oh, no, fucking is clearly named after Adelpert von Wachingham. No, we just like fucking. This is like we've always been about over fucking. Like everyone here, uh, everyone has very much into it. Uh, yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to go to fire, you want to go to fucking if you want, you know, <laughs> if you want history, uh, if you want actual intercourse, you come here. All right, we've got. Um, I think we'll do one more. Here's actually, course, Pennsylvania. There's which should also be. We sh- there should definitely be Just like a city. league of poorly named cities that all get to hang out. All the mayors can like like knob go to this end, very cl- very in, clandestine. In yeah. Very clandestine meeting where they don't p- report the names of anything. It's just like the mayors, like quiet, the quiet mayors of America and the World Association. And they go hang out all in favor of this, all in favor of this. Um, gentlemen, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very, very much for, for coming on and being funny. Can I borrow you for one more headline to uh, do some merriment for the Patreon crowd as uh, some bonus content? Uh, fucking cool. yeah. <laughs> fucking a yeah that doesn't make grammatical sense you're just saying austrian town yes i guess yeah. you're very enthusiastic about austria yeah well I like guess, the city uh thank you thank you gentlemen both very much and thank you listeners at home have a great and glorious weekend patreon crowd please stick around because our next headline is ashes of late james Dewan, scotty from star trek were smuggled onto the international space station